What I wanted to do today was to talk about some real world examples of using AI. I find that there's an awful lot of presentations talk about what you might do with AI and machine learning, and most of them don't really talk about any specifics. So I'm going to try and be talk about some places that we use them in the real world. And as Tristan mentioned, that the you know, retail trading has been rather a significant factor in markets in the last 12 months, and I'll show you an example of using it there. Uh, just a two second overview of MAN as mentioned, we run a bit over $130 billion. Uh, we're the world's largest listed hedge fund business. Uh, we're also a very significant quant player. So about 70% of what we do is quantitative. And that's really where the ideas behind our machine learning implementations come from. But actually, we use it across both the quantitative and the discretionary fund management we do. And even we're starting to use it in some of the private market activities. So here, again, Quick thing, you could read that. It takes the average human about 30 seconds to read that. The interesting thing is with the developments that we've got in both the sort of coding process and the maths around machine learning and also the hardware, you know, we think that the people who build the technology on which we do our machine learning are just as important as the people who do the, who do the maths, if you like. We think in the time it took you to read those three sentences, our model can read about 18 million sentences. That's clearly quite a lot more than a human could get through. Why is that important? Well, there is just a huge amount of written information in finance or written or equivalent. Um, the, the one I always like to use is the thing, so call transcripts, so company earnings call. I'm a CEO of a company. I have to have a public company. I do an earnings call. I do two a year. Most companies do four a year. You know, when you look at the volume of listed companies that are in the world, that gets you, even excluding Chinese companies, that gets you to 20, 30,000 earnings calls a year. They typically last an hour. Uh, CEOs typically want to make them relatively dull. It's in, well, you, I guess if you wanted to listen to all of those earnings calls, you would need a massive army. One person can listen to maybe two earnings calls a day before they get bored. Uh, that, you know, if you want to listen to 20, 30,000 in a year, that's a massive army of people. That's financially not possible. So you can use machine learning to actually listen to or listen, listen to all of those, basically take a transcript of the call and analyze it and give you a sense about what the company said. At this stage, machine learning in listening to a single call is not as good as a very experienced human listening to a single call. But what it can do is listen to the huge volume of calls that really humans get bored and are not very good at listening to. And they can give you a sentiment and read across and information out of a huge array of calls. So those are the sorts of things that we're using in daily process. But I thought I would use a very specific example of what's going on in the current world. So look, we all know that this year, sort of last year with people working from home, uh, retail frenzy in the US markets really started to take over and obviously is quite a thing in career markets as well. Um, Wall Street bets has become the home for chatter. This is a sort of a Reddit stream. I don't know how many of you have ever looked at it. Uh, I was introduced to it by my 26 year old son who said, you have to look at this. This is important to what's going on. And I had a look and honestly, I didn't understand any of it. It was like a foreign language to me. Um, there is a huge amount of commentary going on in there, some of it interesting, some of it gibberish. There's a lot of use of emojis. There's a lot of use of sort of what we might call non-traditional language. There's, there's some strange use of words that the way that they have a sort of uh, a language they've developed for themselves in Wall Street bets. But it is moving markets. Um, now, you know, for a human to sit, so, so this is a, a particular day. We, do, we run a screen every single day looking at Wall Street bets in order to understand what it is that the retail frenzy is about today and what's changing in the sentiment of the different things they're looking at. Um, on this particular day, there were 525 different threads which were significant on Wall Street bets. So that's 500 different chains you would want to go through. Um, that there were an enormous number of comments, so 200,000 comments, 
if you spend your day trying to read 200,000 comments, well, none of us would want to spend our day doing that. You wouldn't get through it all. You wouldn't keep up. So we use a machine language process. Now here, we started with a structured learning process that we talked about before with the sorts of language we use in the normal world. And we actually had to move to another level of unstructured learning because the sentence construct, the use of emojis is just very different than we use in normal language. But what it does every day is to tell us which of the stocks, so here, for the purposes of this, we've had to take out the tickers, but you could see it's, um, you know, the, the sort of pure health stock at the top, then you get, uh, you know, the, the AMC and uh, game and the other, you can tell where is the sentiment every day and is it going up, is it going down, is there a new stock getting to the top of what they care about, is one something that's falling off the list that they're driving. That can be used in the quant area to think about trading long and short in those different ideas as the as the strength of sentiment grows or reduces. And it can be used in the discretionary area to help people avoid getting caught by things which are suddenly a, a sort of hot flavor stock. And so it's been a very helpful way for us to give a, a valuable tool into the armory of the discretionary fund managers that lets them avoid trouble without having to spend all day reading through the Wall Street bets. So we, you know, we haven't been caught by any of the, the, the sort of fashion stocks which have really moved a lot and cost some hedge funds a lot of money this year. So that's a sort of good example. And one of the interesting things is from the point where we said, hey, you know, this is important to telling us what's going on, to the first sort of report that was produced daily took, I think it was about 36 hours, day and a half for the machine learning team to be able to run. There's so much data, there's so many of these comments, streams, so on, that they were able to run the processes very quickly to build up a picture about the language they use there and to use that to develop a, a, a thing for us. So there's one good example of where we use machine learning in, in you know, to protect us in the real world. Um, if I move to a second broad example, uh, which is machine learning in trading. So when you pick a stock or you, I mean, this, this applies in every sector of the market, but basically you make a decision that you want to buy or sell something. Then you have to go in the market and execute your trade. 20 years ago, when you did that, you called a bank and the bank was sort of making a market or providing the liquidity to you. You know, that was a certain way of trading. Today, the other side of essentially every trade that you execute in equity markets, in futures markets, in FX markets, in uh, bond markets, increasingly even in credit markets, the other side is some version of high frequency trader. So the other side of your trade, the person who is providing you liquidity when you buy or sell a share is someone who is, is a high frequency trader. And if you sort of operate in the old school way of calling a broker and asking them to manage an order or even just having a human who works for you manage an order, you are almost certain to get suboptimal execution. And on each individual trade, it can be a noticeable cost. Over the course of a year with the volume of trading you might wanna do, it can make a real difference to the outcome you get on the returns in your portfolio. So we recognize this and thought, well, how do we build something that can take the other side? Um, and this is where a, a version of machine learning was really, really helpful. One of the things is, you want to observe whether what you're doing is working or not, not working. Humans tend to, when they find a way of doing something, if it works once, they want to keep doing the same thing. The way that the high frequency trading businesses are set up is they look for one particular trade being done one way and they expect a series of other trades done the same way. So they are looking for you to repeat a particular process. And so that's their thought process of how they make money out of you. So we used a, um, a, a part here, so from the, the 
uh, bottom of the three when I showed you earlier. It's, it's, a, it's a fascinating type of machine learning in reinforcement learning that happens to be called multi-elm bandit. And basically the maths for this was developed by somebody who was trying to work out how to optimize a strategy in a casino with a whole load of those one-armed bandits where you put a coin in and pull a handle. Um, and they were trying to work out how to maximize that in, in the world before computer algorithms in those. And so basically what this algorithm does is to, so in, in real version, we have you know, multiple ways of executing different brokers to execute, different exchanges to execute, different algorithms we'll use. So there might be 20 or 30 different ways of executing. And the algorithm will be constantly testing, the, the machine learning process will test between different ways of doing that execution. Here, I'm gonna use an example with just two different ways of doing the execution because it, it gives you a, a sense and a picture of what you're doing. You will see here, I've got sort of five bars and I'm gonna show you this animated in a minute. But basically the top one shows what is the slippage that you're getting. So the cost of executing between the two different methods and it shows it over time. The, the third bar here shows you, so one means to use 100% of one algorithm, zero uses to use 100% of the other algorithm. You see it starts at 50% or 0.5 because basically the machine learning process doesn't know which is the right answer. It just wants to use data to tell it. And then the one below shows when it's at the top, it's trying one execution process. When it's at the bottom, it's trying another execution. And then the bottom line, which gives you a sense of it, shows our actual savings in real dollars on a particular execution. So here I'm going to show it to you rolling. And you see here the, the model starts with a 50-50 choice between the two. It's jumping up and down between the two. It starts to find that one of the execution processes is more efficient. And so it's doing the bottom one, but it constantly tests a different way of doing it. And you see sometimes actually it does quite a few. And that is making sure that actually the way it's executing continues to be optimum for the client's point of view or your execution point of view to make sure you get the best results out of your trading process. So yeah, it is here, simplified version, two things. When you start looking at this with 20 different techniques available, you can imagine that the human gets lost, but the, the AI process can really help you there. Um, so I guess in conclusion, you know, humans are brilliant at looking at things, at, at a particular picture and understanding what's in it. They're brilliant at having a conversation and interpreting what's going on but we're not very good at processing huge volumes of data. There are huge volumes of data available in the financial markets. And once you start including not just the numbers, but words and pictures, that then it all gets completely beyond the capability of humans. This is where computers come in, technology comes in, and particularly AI processes. And they're able, as long as you develop the right techniques, combined with the right hardware, they're able to provide real insight, which you can either trade directly on, which we do a lot of, or you're able to use it to provide information to the human portfolio managers who can then make different decisions.